This is Atlas Talisman, aka the Human Avatar, signing in to Twitch. And today I'm just doing a bit of behind the scenes. Uh, the game launches its alpha version next week. And I'm just going to check that I'm actually going live. If you are one of my four followers, <laughs> let me know that you're here. <clears throat> I'm sure it will be going live. I'm online, my channel. Yes, I'm live in just chatting. <clears throat> so back to work. What I'm currently doing is making the book of beginnings. So next week I turn 39, 23rd of December, it's my birthday, and I'm launching a project which has been a long time in the making. Um, it's, I guess, a social experiment slash IRL questing game. <clears throat> it's based on an alternate reality concept where there's the story game and then there's the real world questing aspect. And I play a vicarian. So basically, I am a human avatar. You can control me in the game of life. And there's a bunch of different aspects of how that works. Currently going to be running through Zoom here into Twitch. Um, and it's going to take over more and more of my life. But this is the very beginning. So for those people who are watching, you are here at the ground level being some of the founders. So thank you for that. And today's really just a behind the scenes look. It's not going to be necessarily so entertaining, but we'll give you insight into the current work. Um, I'm also going to be live streaming a meeting I'm having tonight with or who I call the council, which are three people who are really instrumental in helping me bring this together, just from a community peer inspiration love huddle space. And um, then next week on Wednesday, I'll be having a streaming in my cyber party here for my birthday with a bunch of people. I'm not sure, maybe it could be 30 or 40 people, maybe more. Um, and we're going to be exploring how to turn me into a human avatar and what the framework is that I've created to have different origins of influence, meaning like who gets to hold the control and actually steer me in the game of life and what the points are and the different modes of play, all that kind of stuff will be explained. But for now, I'm just gonna go straight into what I was doing, um, which was writing the book of beginnings. So just to give you a little bit of context of the story, in the fictional world, um, it's all set in a town called Iris. And at the center of Iris is Mount Atlas. And there is a fabled Atlas talisman on the top of that mountain. People say, if you get the talisman, then you can see into other realms, then you have all these super spiritual powers. <clears throat> and around the base of that mountain live this monastic order called the Vicarians. And they are nuns, N-O-N-E, -N -E, people who are aspiring to become no one so that they become can become everyone or anyone. And so that's like the, the stoic, Zen-like, monastic order um, and this book the book of beginnings is one of the i guess the sacred texts for the vicarians and also if people want to play and eventually be on the side of the camera as a vicarian this is a little bit of a training manual so people can start to do that and it's legit as well i mean you can actually train with me in embodiment and creativity and questing and this is the way to play life as a game and i'm smiling <laughs> because I'm feeling bit by bit that dream landing into reality. There's a, a big gap between, I guess, what you'd call maybe the noosphere and then meat space or the physical reality. I think someone once said that the graveyard is one of the richest places on the planet because of all of the gold that is buried in the minds of people who didn't bring it to fruition before they died. And I think that's maybe a, a beautiful tragedy about being a dreamer and a visionary. Um, but there's a, a quote I often like to inspire myself through, which is those who love peace need to be as organized as those who love war. And I'm trying to get organized to bring some creative, loving work to the world. Um, and this is part of it. So that's why I'm smiling because I'm, I'm here. I've got my, my Twitch, the human avatar background up, got this little logo I put together. Um, this is Vicarious, the game. So enough of that. Um, hopefully this is interesting to game designers or for those 
people who really want to geek out on the process, but I'm literally just going to be writing the book. So it's going to be a, a scream. I'm going to be sharing my scream now. <clears throat> sharing my scream. Ah! And you get to watch me type if that's interesting to you. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about sort of the design and what I'm doing as well. And I'm drawing on a bunch of other documents I've created beforehand. So it won't be all me typing. There we go. Cool. So screen share. Desktop share. There we are. That's the background I just made. <clears throat> but where I'm actually playing at the moment is here. So this is the book of beginnings. These are actually like chi or chakra points um, without the body. So let's have a look at what that links through to. Cool. So these are the points. Um, Cruise this dude over here. So this is one of the basic Vicarian symbols. Whenever I play open world theatre, when we're out on the streets or doing public displays of humanity, I like to stand there. It's a little bit like an A pose of a game character. Um, and it, for me, it's this idea of being surrendered, you know, your palms facing forward, just open. And very much about the idea of surrender um, is within Vicarious, where you are surrendering to an online player. So that's what those points map to. Um, there's also actually, an, I guess, the Earth Star down here as well. Um, and it's a little bit of a, like my own version, because there's the root, but then there's two points here. Usually there'll be one sacral point, but I've, I've created two, because I've split creativity into two sections, which is art and mythology. So the art for me is more how you take beauty and aesthetics in through your senses without a story. It's just like the the taste of food or the feeling of a vibration going through your body or the sound without knowing what it means, but just the, the basic witnessing of the state of the world. And then the story part comes in through the mythology where we give it meaning. We start to weave these big mythopoetic narratives that we're a part of. So yeah, that's the background behind what is on the front of this. Oh my, my laptop's fan is really buzzing. So the book of beginnings. Here's a little vicarious, and that's obviously V, but there's also this person standing there in the middle of it. And here are, do, 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 reveal the cards. So these are the archetype, taboo, and direction cards. Um, also, just to be really clear, the art is not mine. Um, let's see. I think his name is, what is his name? Caper? Oh, gosh. Let's have a look. And I really want to give kudos where it's due. Let's go to Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. And, um, oh wow, this must be a browser I don't usually use. Bloop. There we go. So, yeah, I've got a I'm calling the event Storyborn, um, but if you're on Twitch, you don't have to worry about that because it's all coming through here. Here's me and here's me. So as you can see, it's got kind of a transhuman kind of vibe. Storyborn is basically the name for anyone who gets born or birthed into the world um, of Vicarious. And the story is based around a comedy club called People's Soup. Um, anyway. So this is the event, and then I've got these cards, which you've seen, and there the artist is on Behance.net. Check out Kakperk, Kakper H. Kik from Poland. So as you can see, really incredible, sort of vintage collage styles. And I went through and found ones which were really just perfect. Oh wow, I really like this one as well. Such beautiful work. Um, and Kakpa, if you're watching, I've actually have messaged you and I'd love to collaborate because this is just such exquisite work. It continually talks about the sort of themes of Vicarious as well. Obviously, he's a human being, the brain tree coming out and someone else working on him, which I really like, and then maybe the hand of God coming down and 
obviously navigation aspects yeah it's just so on point for my intention my brand um, and what vicarious is so huge respect to you and i'll continue to reach out to you um if i can't get hold of you obviously i won't use your art um might recreate it myself not copying but just being inspired by the design or if you are watching this and you create these kind of collages um yeah let's collab and jam because what i'm really trying to do is get rid of my artist ego which tries to do everything myself and be more a the game designer of this game and also be the crash test dummy to play test it um so anyway without further ado here are the cards these are the archetypes so when you're playing vicarious there's different modes of play and the modes relate to the goals you're going for so it can be uh, free play which is pretty obvious you just go do whatever you want it can be legend mode where you're trying to improve me my actual life atlas talisman you know play the legend saga of the hero who is me in the world and see through my skills and my aspirations and my limitations how you would improve my life and then there's also the third one being archetype mode which is where these cards come into play so the theory being that if you could live from all of these centers you'd be living your living your best life you'd be living your fully realized self um so it's like you know your root is connected to your creature so that is this card here and that's cool half human half bird with bees and that's what this uh, icon up here represents it's an archetype card uh, if you go down to these cards with that oh my gosh that's the taboo card um, and then over here with the compass those are the directions cards so if you were to live from your creature you'd be primal you'd be connected with your the meat body you'd be connected with your senses you'd be wild and able to um, connect in with nature really well as well um, if you're living from your architect as you probably think you can connect in with planning but you can also connect in with the physical built world and so we build labyrinths at that stage and work with feng shui and things like that um, from your artist you're connected to your senses and appreciating the beauty of the world and then from your mythologist you're starting to weave those senses into meaning um, from your pilgrim you're obviously going on a quest uh, opening it, yourself up into the real world um, and then the celebrant is your you're been initiated as a pilgrim and you can now guide others into the sacred space and then finally is becoming the game master the person who can actually start to devise their own systems and ultimately help create a new society uh, over here these are directions so I've, northwards is associated with exploring um, eastwards is associated with inventing southwards is associated with building and westward is associated with protecting and then in between them kind of like on the diagonals are the taboos so i call these taboos because i think they're the things that got to charge around we might love them we might hate them we might have an aversion but it's, it's like a hot potato when you start to engage with these things something's <laughs> something gets stirred collectively so and i really like the acronym gasm to summarize the four g-a-s-m so the first one is god second one is art third one is sex fourth one is money and then the final archetype is the freeman so i'm replacing a's with x's just to be non uh, gender specific with the man part we're all human we are humans for the next um and so the way i see it is that we are actually freeman i mean my games are not necessarily creating new realities they're creating framings for the actuality and welcoming us into the open world so i call all of my work what comes under the banner of open world theater and so open world theater for me is about artistic frames which help you interface and realize the truth of our actual freedom realize the truth that the lines on the maps are not really there the truth of our unity and the truth of our innate belonging on this planet so before you play vicarious you're a freeman when you leave vicarious you're a freeman um, but in in the middle you get to play 
all of these uh, other characters, which always link through to the actuality or, or true part of yourself. Cool, well, let's get to writing. So I've got a few other things I've created. Let me see where you are. Uh, documents, blending, now you can see my file structure. <laughs> my curious. Hmm. So I've also taken a few different people through a process. The name has changed in different, in different times. What would it be called? Chart of Clowns or something? Clown chart? Yes, clown charts. So I really like the idea of the sacred clown. Um, oh, and this is Manassi, he's also an amazing artist. Look at this crazy, beautiful depiction. Yeah, so also really inspired by this artist, which feels feels very, um, I'd call it Zen-like, something that's orientally inspired. There's a group called Zen Zen Zo in Australia, um, which I think is kind of linked to Bhutto. Um, yeah, all of these really beautiful, I'm very inspired by Commedia dell'arte as well, Italian mask work. So all of the sacred clowning, the shamanic way we can play as the fool to explore our humanity, go into the taboo um, and be theatrical, but at the same time coming back to such a real like raw humanness as well. So the reason I was bringing you here, I'll check out openworldtheater.com if you want. I'm actually building a website purely for Vicarious, which I won't let you know about just yet. Well, I won't tell you the URL because it's not ready, but I'll be launching that on my birthday. But for now, if you check out openworldtheatre.com, that's uh, got a summary of my work. So here we are. This is how the different archetypes map. Um, and there's also different focuses. So, yeah, so much terminology. <laughs> but different archetypes are related to what I call orbits or <clears throat> areas of focus. And each orbit has, has a few different lenses. So different ways of viewing the world, engaging, and ultimately training your senses to become more sentient so that our intelligence can be a felt sense, not just a cerebral Western masculine making sense, facts from reason, but actually coming to a, a holistic sentience where we actually feel we're tapped in through all of our energy centers and we just are a little bit more integrated. So yeah, I won't go into this too much more, but you're gonna now watch me Try and integrate all of these pages into the book of beginnings. There's two archetypes which I am not yet playing in, but they do exist. And that's of the naturalist and the technologist. So currently the cards just relate to these ones here um, and the artist. And the naturalist and technologist exist, but they're kind of postgraduate areas. So once you've gone through everything and then gone and been a freeman for a while and done your own thing then you can come back and train with me in the uh, the open world gymnasium and we'll continue on with technology and nature um but i think there's plenty to to get up and going with before then so that's the duality here going between technology and nature and this is the way that i map the archetypes um, the directions and also the taboos to the natural cycle of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And I've brought this all together with a compass. So I wanna turn this compass into um, something that's interactive, maybe through an app or just a website. <clears throat> but for now, it's just a, a static image which we can use to reflect on how we're engaging in life. Oh, whoa, this whole time, have you been able to hear me? Because my headphones are plugged in. Has this been very quiet up until now? Well, hopefully you've been able to hear me. I don't want to hear myself echoing, but uh, I'll hold it closer. Um, so yeah, actually just unplug it. Hello. Actually just unplug it. Oh, there's an echo, maybe it was good that I wasn't listening to myself. Maybe it's because I'm logged into Twitch. 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 
Hello Twitch, I'm the human avatar. Can I have a caveat to say that I cannot afford caviar, but I would like to dip into your eggs because I know the fact that we're all just broken legs. As a luck lucky artist, we are starting to chart the darkness. Okay, wait, so I get back to what I'm doing. Why can I hear my echo? Is it because Twitch, Twitch is on? Uh, I'm going to log out of there. By log out, I mean press the X. By, by log, 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 out, out, out. <laughs> Why is your Max Headroom? Any other Max Headroom fans here? Out, out, out. Log, log. Log, log, out, out. Can you hear that? Log, out, log, log, out, out. Out, out, log, log. Max, Max, head over. I am, 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 am. Artist. Liz, Liz, Liz. Tell, tell us. Man, 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 man. The human avatar. Talk. Talk. <laughs> Don't you love chaos? Don't you love chaos? K, K, us, us, us. K, us, us, us. The internet is chaos. It's still feeding back. All right, I don't know what's going on, children, but we are all in the nursery of life, trying to work out how to not cut our teeth on the hand that feeds. I'm very distracted by the fact that I'm doing a Twitch live, to be honest. I haven't really done any work yet, but hopefully it's interesting for some of you gamer geeks um so yeah in essence this is the why is it echoing why why is it is it echoing i'm just going to plug this in i really hope you can still hear me but i can't concentrate while i'm echoing so is that i'll just hang them over i'll just plug it in like this bluff blap so as you can see, Vicarious is very much lo-fi and in its early stages. But that's part of the charm, isn't it? It's part of the charm. Can you hear that? I really hope you can, um, because I'm saying really interesting things. So yeah, a key part of the game at this stage is really making the game itself. So it's going to appeal to people who like to get BTS behind the scenes. Um, and watch someone create something because I'm very much in creator mode. And it's also a good log, a journal process to show that I'm actually making this thing because as you can see, I'm doing, I'm doing the things. So the book of beginnings starts thusly. Let's make a new page. Cliff, blam. Um, so real simple. I like to split up my documents with six columns. I just find it a good way to balance things out. Tapping W to go back and forward between the, I guess it'd be like the metadata of the visual layout. Just a bit of, bit of geeky design stuff for those who are trying to create PDFs. I think that if you're an entrepreneur in the modern world, it really helps to have a little bit of design now and a little bit of coding understanding at least to be able to copy and paste, be a bit of a script kitty and copy and paste things. Um, so yeah, here's my crash tutorial and how I do design. Am I gonna start this? I think probably um, I like some leaving white space so I'm probably going to make this a little bit like a, um, maybe that much, a little bit like a little book of poetry. <clears throat> I like to justify text, justify yourself, which means that it neatly goes up against both left and right margins. So, I mean, you could do type, fill with placeholder text to give you an idea. So that's normally, that's just left aligned, um, but what I want to do is justify it. So that's when you get this selection here, justify with last line left aligned, plink. Um, I don't like hyphenation. 
So I want to go to window, um, cliffy diff diff, paragraph, settings, justification. Now this, what I'm about to show you, if anyone here does layout stuff, this is something I use all the time. And this is allowing with this justification for there not to be these big channels between words because it'll basically stretch them apart to fill the space and it starts to look gappy. So instead what I do is I have um, a minus, oofta, oofta, what is it? Yeah, minus five and plus five. So that way I can actually adjust the space between the words to 5% either way. And then glyph scaling means it's actually going to stretch the glyph, the actual letter, which <laughs> for the um, typologist, typographist, tip gavaglosts, um, they won't like that. But it's not noticeable if you make it just 98% or 102. Um, cool. So that's a setting that I always use for, for justified text. Cliffy diff, do that. And also don't like hyphenation. I want whole words. And then the last thing that I do is I go to type, go to story, and then do optical margin alignment, which means that, <clears throat> see over there with, um, what is that word? Fuga, with fuga, um, which has a full stop. If I hadn't have done the optical margin alignment, that full stop would have been inside the line. So it would have been like a little gap, but this allows the full stops and the commas to bleed over the margin. Cool. <clears throat> so that is now our paragraph style, our justified non-hyphenated optical realignment uh, text. And then having done that, um, I would then like to create that as a style because I'll apply that to all of the other paragraphs. So going to, no, styles, not paragraph. Paragraph styles. Create a new one. And I'm going to call this justified. Yeah. So it's got all the settings that I just created. Because um, I, I made that style. I plussed it while that was selected. So now we're good to go. And this should be here. Let's dock it. Can I dock it somewhere? Can I dock it here, friends? Well, that's silly. I don't want it to be a whole thing. I just want it to I'll collapse that. Cool. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so here we are, justified. And I'm going to write some poetic-ish. Um, what do you guys think? Should we do a serif or sans serif font? Serif are like the little curvy bits. See those little jaggedy bits at the end of the the lines and originally they were like that because we used to chisel letters into stone so the chisel marks had to be incorporated that's why you got these little <whistles> handles and bliffs and blaps um, but sans serif sans being an east anglian word from mesopotamia i think it's french um meaning without so sans serif is without serifs and the famous type is called Helvetica. There's actually a whole documentary about Helvetica. If you are a typographist and want to know about that. And then there's Helvetica new, spelt with an E-U-E, -E because there's never enough vowels. Um, I just like my good old standard Helvetica, thanks. And I want it to be just regular, thanks, because I like averageness. See, and as you can see, no serifs. They have been sansed. Cool. So there is your graphic designer tutorial for today. As you can see, I uh, am well trained in the art of graphics. Okay, so what would your first word be for the book of beginnings? I like something like magic, like and so it is or and so we begin. And it's kind of, I think it's funny to start with and as the first word. I usually like to start everything with hello world um, for obvious reasons, but I've done that enough times. Maybe even dot, dot, dot. I like that. Start with ellipsis, eclipsy trips, clist, glyft, pissed, trist. And then it's the middle of something. So it has, this, it alludes to the fact that the beginning is actually not the beginning. And so we begin. 
we are in a continual state of beginning. Each moment, uh, rebirth of now. Eat your heart out, Eckhart Tolle. <clears throat> See, I don't know. That's kind of cool. Let's see how, obviously, more white space above at least. I had a, um, a teacher, lecturer in uni, Matt Leach, shout out, um, who talked about just using the eye. Because often, you know, when you're starting out, it's like, oh, I've got to get like that space and make sure it's the same. And top like that space and then get that and it's just a lot of extra work so yeah the eye works and so we begin we are in a continual state of beginning each moment a rebirth of now as vicarians we aspire to meet that moment empty so that life can fill us with the new I like capitalizing things to indicate they have some kind of what would that be called a super noun I don't know We aspire to becoming no one. So the um, vicarians are, as I mentioned, nuns because they aspire to be no one. That's kind of like the bodhisattva for bodhi state. So that we can experience anything as anyone. The book of beginnings. We'll start you on this path. It could be nice on the first page just to be succinct and short. I like to begin it and end it with ellipses. Yeah. I'm inspired to actually stop this. Um, stop this. <laughs> to stop this cast now. Just because there's so many technical things I'm not sure. I'm not sure if like this whole thing is echoing. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, and I would like to, yeah, share this in a, a legible, intelligible way. So I'm going to stop this cast now. Um, thank you so much if you have been watching um, or if you've even interacted. Where's my phone? Let me check it. No, I don't know where it is. I was going to see if anyone had commented on Twitch. If you have been interacting and I haven't seen you, thank you so much. Um, I'm so new to Twitch. Like I said, I literally got, I think, four followers when I last checked. But I'm going to share this video if it's intelligible uh, on YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is all the stuff in the beginning, youtube.com forward slash, was it C or U, whatever the thing is, forward slash Atlas Talisman. Um, but I'm trying to flow everything here to Twitch. And my Twitch handle is the human avatar. So if you're watching this on Facebook, um, please come through here to Twitch. Um, I might do some live streams on Facebook because that's where I have most engagement. Um, but more and more, I'm just going to try and shift it over here to Twitch full time. So if you're watching this on another platform, um, please check out the human avatar on Twitch. Um, please rock up on the 23rd of December. Um, I'm going to be live streaming from 10 p.m. New Zealand time. And we're pretty much the futurist place on the planet. So that's like 8 p.m. Australian time. It is um, European time, as in like Spain and such, um, is 
I think it's 12 hours. So that'll be 10 a.m. Um, and then if you're in London or the UK, I believe it's 9 a.m. on Wednesday, the 23rd of December. So we're basically going to be having a big, big um, Zoom slash Twitch party. You can also jump in the Zoom to actually en engage with me directly. Um, you are going to become Storyborn if you'd like, as in have a character in the world. Um, and I'm going to explain in a more succinct way, more like play heavy, let's get in there and do it, exactly how the game works. Um, we'll also be unveiling the new website for Vicarious um, and starting to play. And so what that looks like is essentially me full time making the game Vicarious um, with daily plays. We actually go out with my phone into IRL in real life to quest in the streets and, and see what happens if online people play me, come through as the consciousness through me. I'm also going to be steered by chaos, by intuition, by uh, AI. I'm not calling it artificial intelligence because I think we're going to move beyond that really soon as soon as we start to see the sentience in machines. Um, so I'm calling it AI algorithmic intelligence um, and patterns. So all of these things will be my decision point. And essentially I'm asking what happens with my life if I stop being so self-centered and egoic and protecting myself, therefore defending my limitations and my inhibitions. Um, what would happen if I allowed you or AI or the hive mind or some other form of control to be my origin of influence what will happen i don't know this is the beginning and this is the book of beginnings so thanks for watching this little behind the scenes um get involved and i look forward to seeing what the internet does with me big love I don't have any gang signs. Actually, no, that's not totally true. There's kind of a, there's a few things. So this is for open world gymnasium. That's the training part. This is for uh, the theater part, being a vicarian. And this is for the questing part, because it explores. So see you soon, loves. Thank you for playing.